Hi, I'm Jeff Pospisil, the 10-Minute Treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to make a video in PowerPoint. You know, for me, I found out this trick about a year ago, and it was really a game changer because all of a sudden I could put out uh, videos a lot easier. They look better than they used to, and I didn't have to learn a whole bunch of video editing software or any of that kind of stuff. So why would you want to do this? Well, for me, I'd been giving PowerPoint presentations for years and years and years. So I already knew how to put together a PowerPoint and I knew how to give a presentation. Um, now it was putting those two things together and I, I never realized until about a year ago that Microsoft had already built it in that you can record your presentation. So all of a sudden the pain of recording something and putting it through video editing software and all that was simplified because it was something I was already used to. So that's the biggest reason for me. Um, second reason is I already paid for the software. I don't have to download something new onto my machine or pay for something. I, I already have the software. So those are probably the two primary reasons. So for me, I start out by imagining this as if I was going to give a presentation in front of a group. You know, what do I want to share? How do I want the presentation to flow? And that's where I start my video is in that mode. Um, for me, I've also shifted and I did this quite a long time ago about shifting away from a lot of text on my slides to uh, more visuals. And I think that's an important thing too, especially with videos is how do you make them a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more visual, but start out at that level. What if you were giving a presentation to a group or to an individual? How would that look if you were able to stand in front of them? So start out with that in mind. So after you get your slides all the way done, go ahead and go to the slideshow tab or menu and there's the record slideshow. And usually you just hit record slideshow from the beginning and you can record it that way. Uh, there's also an option to record from the current slide. Like let's say you made a mistake in one slide. You could just re-record that one slide. That is one of the nice things is you could just re-record one slide and you don't have to worry about re-recording everything. So let me show you exactly what it looks like when you record a presentation. So I'm recording both screens. So this might look a little small and I'm using Microsoft Expression screen capture for this. Um, cool thing to know. I mean, I've used Microsoft Expressions for quite some time, but I just found out today while I was making this video that you can have screen capture uh, is built in. It's a feature of PowerPoint. So that was a cool thing to learn. One thing too I want you to look at, so on the right side, bottom corner there, there's that box and that'll make more sense why I have that there later on. So let's go ahead and hit slideshow and you're going to see on the left side you have the presentation view, on the right side is the, the view itself and there is my video shows up right in that box. So I can hide that preview. Um, that box just serves, serves to make a frame for my video, uh, the video of me. And let's go ahead and hit record. And you get a three second countdown. So three seconds to get yourself ready to record. And now it's recording. And everything I say, everything I, I look like is being recorded. And when I'm ready to go to the next slide, I just click over or you can use the arrows on your keyboard. And then when I'm done recording, I could just hit stop. And it's easy as that. If I want to re-record the slide, all I have to do is hit record button again and I could just re-record this one slide. Or if I want to re-record that one, I can just re-record that one as well. So, and those videos stay with that slide. I could record again without the video. If I didn't want to have video in there, I could just turn that off and start recording. Now, if I was just going to talk here, I would explain something. I would probably get rid of that box, of course. I wouldn't need that. And let's stop it. And now, instead of the video there, there's that little audio thing. And that audio will start playing as soon as that it switches to that slide. There's also ways you can use markers and whatever else, if that's your thing. If you like to do a John Madden and mark up your screen, that's also an option as well. All right. So one of the things I learned about a month ago is that you can actually edit 
that video. It doesn't have to be that small and in the bottom right corner. You can grab it and I delete my frame. I can make it bigger and uh, move it wherever I want to. And all the video formatting options come up then. So whatever you wanted to do, whether you wanted to make it glow, whether you wanted to add some 3D rotation to it, um, if you uh, yeah, add a frame to it, um, all those options are on the table now. Uh, you can crop it. Let's say I wanted to just have my face maybe. Crop everything else out. And now I can hit play and you're just going to see my face. So uh, that all works too. You can also change the colors and all the other options are now available for you to mess around with. So. So here's where I actually found how to record your screen. It's under insert. And then there's the on the very far right is screen recording. And that brings up this menu. So you get to select the part of the screen you want to record. So and then if you want to record the audio, the pointer, and then there's the record button. Initially, I went here because I wanted to show you how to insert music into the background. So I'll also show you that just to the left of the screen recording, there is the audio recording. So let's say that you wanted to add some music. You could go ahead and go to your audio insert, audio on my PC. And I could pick the Beatles Yellow Submarine here. And um, one of the things you could do then is play it in the background. So when you hit it, you can hit play in the background and it'll just keep playing and it, you can have it either loop or you could have it play out. Um, you could adjust how long it plays. So you can have it fade out, you could trim it. So it's a three minute song. So if you only wanted to play it for maybe 10 or 20 seconds, you could do that. Um, but that is a way that I've added audio and it, it works pretty slick for the most part. You, you might have to adjust the volume level is the one thing that I find that I most often have to do is I might have to put it as low as background music. But that is the gist of how you would do that. After you've actually recorded all your slides and added any background music or whatever you want to go, when, it, when it's ready to go, here's how you turn it into an actual video. So go ahead and go. Uh, there's actually two ways to do this. You can go to File and Save As. And then there's a drop down box for the type of file. And there's the MP4. That's the one type I normally save it as. There's also this export button, which is probably the proper way to do this. You can create a video that way or an animated GIF. Um, but if you create the video, I, I've never messed with these settings. Um, so I'm just going to hit create video and it'll ask me where I want to save it. And so you can do that. Um, one of the things too is it does take a good five ten minutes depending on how long your video is for it to actually export it so just if you're on a time crunch just keep that in mind one last word of advice is to be cautious of the transitions um, i used to always like a fancy transition in between slides um, animations you don't have to worry about but transitions you do when i was first doing these i used to use random transition and I, I now it makes sense that every recording is self-contained in every slide and it wouldn't start the recording until after the transition is all the way complete so I would if a transition took a little long I might still be talking over it and it would not record that little bit what I was talking over so you'd have little gaps in what I was saying so right now I usually use none or I use a, a really quick transition I might use a really quick fade but uh, just be cautious of that there's almost an imperceptible blip when it's done fully done with the transition and it's okay to start speaking again and have it recorded all right i hope this helped you and if you liked it go ahead and like subscribe share i appreciate that all all right see you next time